Hey kids, how are you? It's Pastor Kelly. And this month, we're talking all about individuality. This is one of my favorite topics, about how God created every single one of us, special, unique, with His purpose and plan in mind for our own lives. Kids, I truly believe that God made you perfect. And I hope that this month, as we dive into this word individuality, and we talk about how God made you, you will see just how perfect you really are. Are you ready for a great month with great lessons and learning all about God and yourself? Let's get into it. What are you doing, John? Oh, uh, hey, buddy. I'm about to have some of this tasty treat. Oh, yeah? Eh. What is it? Green beans? No. Corn? No. Bean and bacon soup? Yuck, no. Black beans? No. Red beans? No. Pinto beans? No. Garbanzo beans? No. I give up. What is this tasty treat? It's candy. Can candy? Candy doesn't come in cans, John. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'll bet you a pie in the face Ooh. that that is not candy. You're on. Canned. E. Candy. <laughs> I thought you said there was a tasty treat. Yep. Tasty, right? Yeah. Key lime, my favorite. Oh, mine too. Mmm. 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 -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Right on the hairline. Mmm. Greetings and salutations, our friends. Oh, fancy. Always. Uh huh. I am Brandon. And I'm John. And welcome to the So and So Show. And what a show we have today. Am I right, Brandon? That's right. You know, the beauty is. We don't even know what the show will be today. That's right, because whether you're at home or at church or on the International Space Station, wherever you may be watching our show today, you are going to choose what happens on today's show. You get to create your own so-and-so show. Okay, here's how it's going to work. We're going to do the show like normal, but whenever John and I have a choice to make, you're going to make the choice for us. All you have to do is cheer for the choice you want, wherever you are in the world, and we'll go with whoever cheers the loudest. You got it? Got it. I was talking to them. I got it. Okay, uh, so let's start. Um, John, how is your day going? Oh, uh, so good. So good. My Aunt Suzette came for a visit this weekend, and she always brings me candy. Oh, that is good. Yeah. I want some candy. Do you have any left over? I don't know. Let me see. Ugh. Yeah, just a little. Whoa, we'll never be able to eat all that. Oh, uh, you may be right. Hmm. Hey, you know what? I've always wanted to make a portrait of my face out of candy. Huh? Oh, no, no, let's make something that people will actually want to look at. Yeah. Uh, like, like the Eiffel Tower. Oh, there it is. Your first choice. What should we do? Should we make the Eiffel Tower out of candy? Or a portrait of my face. Start cheering now. Yeah. Turn up the uh, audience microphone. Okay, it sounds like you all want us to make a portrait of John's face out of candy. It's your choice. So let's get to work. Come on! And voila! That is unique. It's a treasure to keep forever. Yeah. Mmm. 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 Gluey. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's perfect right there. Oh, look at that. The eyes follow me wherever I go. Oh, boy. It's time for someone who knows. Oh, oh okay. You get to decide who our guest is going to be. I think it should be the founder 
of the candy factory, sweets to the max. A man who's never given an interview or even been seen in public, Mr. Billy Bonka. And I think our guest should be my cousin Howard. He's a dentist. Really? What? Good dental hygiene is very important. Tooth decay is a huge problem. Just let them vote. All right, what's it gonna be? Whimsical candy connoisseur Billy Bonka or Howard the Dentist? Start cheering now. Dentist. The people have spoken. Please welcome someone who knows. <laughs> Come on in. Welcome. Okay. Welcome. Oh, here. here Ooh, okay. Let me get that. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. <sighs> Tell us who you are and what you know. Well, I'm Billy Bonka and I own the largest candy factory in the world. It's amazing. I think so. <laughs> so what, what do you love about candy? No, oh, what's not to love? The sugary sweetness, the chocolatey chocolateness, the creamy caramel deliciousness. Yes! I love it all, yes. But what I love most about candy yeah? is the profit margins. The Profit margins? Yes. Let me just show you this candy bar. Yum! <laughs> graph. It's a bar graph for candy. As you can see, <clears throat> the actual cost of a chocolate bar is 11 cents, but we sell it for $2.50. And then with quality market research and kids focus groups, we are able to determine the right color packaging that will lead to the highest profit margins. Uh -huh. Do you know what the key to any successful candy company is? Uh, delicious candies? No. Variety? No. Strategic shelf space and positioning. The most profitable candies are the ones at the approximate eye level of an average sized child. Children want what they see. It's really that simple. Huh. Uh, I think we're out of time. Uh, are you sure? I have this uh, delicious chocolate pie. Pie? Chart. It's a pie chart. For chocolate. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show today. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, pie chart. Oh, you can. Okay. Yeah. Yes. For chocolate. So your cousin's a dentist. Too late. Okay. It's Bible story time with Kellen. How's it going, gentlemen? Well, what do you got for us today? Well, our story today is about a woman named Lydia. And to help me tell it, here... Oh, you get to choose how we tell the Bible story today. Okay, I shot a film version of the story. Or I can read it. Start cheering now. Lydia! I'm a the dentist. No, that was a close one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think you chose John! What? Take it away, my friend. Oh, roll it! Let us go down to the river and see if we can find a place of prayer. Paul, over there. I'm Lydia. Let me tell you the message of Jesus. this to be true. I want me and my entire household to be baptized. Do you consider me to be a believer in the Lord? If you do, will you all come to stay at my house? Yes.
That was it? Well, there's not a lot about Lydia in the Bible. John's right. We actually don't know much more than what we just saw. But it was important enough that Luke, the author of Acts, thought he should write it down. And while we don't know a lot about Lydia, there are some really cool things we can guess based off what we know from history. Oh yeah? Like what? Well, we know she sold purple cloth, and this region was known for its purple cloth. It was considered a luxury item. So there's a good chance that Lydia had a thriving business with lots of wealthy customers. Cool. So she was probably really good at her job. What else? Lydia was the first person we know of that became a Jesus follower in Philippi. The very first. And later on, when God miraculously broke Paul and Silas out of prison, do you know where they went? Where? Lydia's house, where all the other Jesus followers with Paul were staying. Lydia had used her skill as a business person, her talent as a craftsperson, and the money she made to provide housing for Paul and all the other believers while they were in town. And she most likely became an important leader of the church in Philippi. She was willing to use her gifts to serve God by helping others. This could be a much longer movie. <laughs> Definitely. I think one of the reasons Luke wanted to include this story was to show that God can use our gifts no matter who you are or where you are. Every person has something they're good at that can be used to help others. Thanks. That's great, Kellen. Thanks so much. Yeah. You're welcome so much. I'll see you guys next time. Later. See ya. Bye. That was really great. Oh, yeah. I, I love that there's so much more to people than what we just see on the surface. I mean, it was just three verses in the Bible about Lydia, but here we are talking about her nearly 2,000 years later. Yeah. I think it's a good reminder that everyone has something to give. Everyone has something they're good at. Yeah, they do. Absolutely. Reveal the question. What are you good at? Maybe you're really good at a sport. Or understanding math. Or maybe, oh, you're really good at making people that feel left out feel welcome. Everyone has something they're good at. And what's cool is that you get to choose how to use the gift God gave you. Oh, which brings us to your final choice of the show. Okay, what should we do for the credits? I say, we eat my self-portrait. Mm. <laughs> and I say, we bring on my cousin Howard, the dentist. Start cheering now. Dentist! I can't tell who won. Let's do both. Yeah! <laughs> See you next time on the So-and-So Show. Yeah, bye! It's tooth time! Woo! Yeah! You get a toothbrush! You get a toothbrush! You get a toothbrush! You get another toothbrush! Yeah. Floss time! One for you! One for you! Cause I got some tongue scrubbers! Oh, Scrub your tongue! There's top pocket floss right here! Oh. You got top pocket floss! That gets all of the little gremlins out! Tongue brush! Tongue scrubber! Yeah! I gave myself a cut. <laughs> I ran out. What a great morning. I just want to take a couple minutes and pray for you. So wherever you are, why don't you just close your eyes and bow your heads with me. Dear God, I thank you for every boy and girl today that's listening. I pray, God, that you would touch their little hearts. God, that you would help them truly believe that you love them and made them perfect just the way they are. I pray, God, as their week goes on, that you will completely be with them. They'll feel your presence everywhere they go. Protect them, keep them safe. In your name we pray, amen. Kids, I hope you have an awesome week, and I'm going to see you again soon.